Noah Sondlin and Herbert Konings are family partners for Security Token Group. All opinions expressed by them or guests on this podcast are solely their opinions and do not represent the views of Security Token Group or its subsidiaries. You should not take any opinion expressed on the show as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow any investment strategy. This podcast is for informational purposes only. Hello and welcome to the Security Token Show. We're here in sunny Miami, Florida. I'm your host, Herbert Konings, and of course, I'm joined by Kyle Solomon for episode 139 this week. We've got a heck of an episode, all the latest security token news, the latest security token offerings, and what's happening on the trading markets with a little dive into the metaverse, followed by our main topic where Kyle and I, we're going to break down exchange tokens. They look a lot like stock, mm. FTX, Crypto.com, Binance, are they in trouble? Molly Fool made a case for it. But before we do, we have to thank our sponsor to make this show possible. That this week is the Security Token Summit Conference. If you haven't heard about it now, go pick up your ticket. It's around the corner, May 15th and 16th in New York. Going to be one of the biggest events of the year. And you've got great, great speakers. The previous SEC chairman, Jay Clayton. We've got Kyle Solon as one of the speakers, as well as many other industry leaders. We're giving away 10 free tickets as well, folks. 10 free tickets on our social media. Go to our Twitter, go to our Instagram, go to our Discord, check us out and you might get a chance to go there for free. Great conference. They've done it many years in the past and mm -hmm. going to be another great one in New York City. Very excited. And with that, Kyle, let's head into the top five. And moving into our top five, we have a heck of a lineup. We've got number one. This is Oddity. Oddity Tech is launching a security token offering. And if you've not heard of Oddity, they're actually the holding company behind a few cosmetic brands, Il Maquillage, as well as Spoiled Child. Il Maquillage, one that was launched in 2018, many have actually heard of it before to the point that this company has already raised private financing at over a billion dollars. This is the first unicorn to be doing a security token offering for equity in the company. You're going to hear more about it in Megan's section later here in the episode. This is the pre-IPO fundraise and huge news they're going to be tokenizing with Securitas. That is very, very exciting. That's huge news. Congrats to Adi. Definitely number one, but close to number one is number two with Ilan Renais, which is actually one of the leading basketball teams in the French uh, Basketball League. And mm -hmm. they themselves are planning a security token, a very cool one at that, profit sharing. Uh, enabling you in the, of course, the club interest, which I think is very, very cool. And of course, you're going to hear more about that in Megan's section. But I think it's worth noting, I, I think it's cool, the fact that you actually get access to their real estate deal as well. They're mm. going to be building a new stadium. This token ties a little bit into that, a potential access to it or something like that. So very cool. Check that out later. They're also using Securitize again, and they'll be using the Avalanche blockchain for their tokenization. Moving into number three, we have tokenized art. This is in Antwerp, Belgium, Woo! the hometown of our co-host here, Herwig. And this is the Royal Museum of Fine Arts. They're taking an art painting called the Carnival de Binache by James and Soar, and they're going to be selling fractional shares of that. We talked about how InvestX is going to be fractionalizing an NFT piece of art, a board ape, and selling shares of it. Now we're seeing real art also being sold as a security token. This is not an NFT. This is a real fungible investment into the art piece by the Royal Museum of Fine Arts in Belgium. And this is super, super cool. Security token for art done the right way. Love that. Moving into number four. But actually, before I do, Kyle, that's the first time I think on the show that the top three are all security token They're offerings. All new offerings. This industry is heating up. Ooh. Hopefully that stays the case. We're going to keep bringing you these amazing, cool offerings. But number four, maybe a little bit <sighs> of a bump on that. Yeah, it's the SEC. The SEC has announced that they have 20 new positions, 20 new positions that they're filling to increase their cyber and crypto unit. So they're definitely going to be beefing up the enforcements. In fact, they lauded the fact that they've had over 80 enforcement actions since 2017. Uh, and that probably hints towards an increased number of measures of enforcement actions probably in the remainder half of this year that we can expect as a result, because otherwise they wouldn't be doing their job, would they? Topics that they specifically noted were crypto asset offerings, exchanges, lending, staking, DeFi, NFTs, and stable coins. But you know what they're not looking at because they're not illegal? 
security tokens. You betcha. Moving into number five, we have Yoshi Markets. We talked about this a little bit in the past because we're excited that this is the first MTF in the UAE that's launching and bringing products to market. UAE based in Abu Dhabi, and they are working with Tezos Gulf's assets for custody and trading. So this is another jurisdiction that's working in the security token space. They specifically noted the Abu Dhabi and UAE regulation because of its flexibility and openness with a high concentration of financial assets that are being underserved in the market currently. So Yoshi Markets makes it out our number five to round out the top five. They have an MTF license. That's the equivalent of an ATS over there to be able to trade. No sign of when they're going to be listing stuff, but of course, we'll keep you updated. And with that, let's get into the rest of the industry news with John Pittman. Thanks for the handoff, fellas. John Pittman here with your weekly industry news update. So let's get to it. Legal news coming out of Idaho. Apparently, Governor Brad Little signed HB 583, otherwise known as the Digital Asset Act. This bill is actually an amendment responsible for governing commercial transactions. This new act will include a chapter exclusively dedicated to the regulation of digital assets. One of the directives in that chapter included distinguishing digital securities from virtual currencies. This essentially confirms that in Idaho, virtual currencies are not securities. From a nomenclature perspective, the bill refers to both digital securities and virtual currencies as digital assets. Although it lumps them both together under that term, it does a pretty decent job at explaining that virtual currencies are used as either a medium of exchange, a unit of account, or a store of value. Moving on to a little closer to the West Coast, you have California Governor Gavin Newsom last week Wednesday issuing an executive order on cryptocurrencies. In it, he laid out a roadmap for regulatory and consumer protections and examined ways the state can take advantage of blockchain technologies and digital assets. Senior advisor to Governor Newsom stated that of the 800 blockchain businesses in North America, about a quarter of them are in California. Going on to say that they've heard from so many that they want to be there in California, but they also want to help them do that responsibly. Speaking of consumer protection, the SEC just added more cryptocurrency firms to the pause list. So PAWS is an acronym for Public Alerts Unregistered Soliciting Entities. The list is meant to inform the public entities that use misleading information to solicit primary non-U.S. investors. The latest addition to that list include 58 soliciting entities, 11 impersonators of genuine firms, and one fake regulator. Of those 58 soliciting agencies, you had names such as 24-7 Crypto Trade, Crypto Trading Hub, Elite Crypto Mines, amongst a few others, obviously. Once again, these firms are not registered with the SEC as required by U.S. securities laws. Next up, we have the Bank of New York Mellon Corporation, otherwise known as BNY Mellon, announcing that Roman Regelman, Chief Executive Officer of Asset Servicing, will also assume leadership of the issuer of services business effective immediately. For background info, as of March 31st, 2022, BNY Mellon had $45.5 trillion in assets under custody in our administration, and then another $2.3 trillion in assets under management. Mr. Regum comes with great experience, having joined BNY Mellon in 2018 as head of digital, responsible for setting the strategic direction for the firm's digital future investments in client and internal digital capabilities, including digital assets and data solutions. And lastly, some more news from New York, specifically out of Wall Street, with yet another player playing with crypto. That player, Goldman Sachs, offering its first Bitcoin-backed loan, thereby allowing the borrower to use Bitcoin as collateral for cash. Spokeswoman for Goldman told Coindesk that the interest and peace in all of this was the structure and the 24-7, 365-day risk management. You know what else is interesting? Your weekly STO updates with Megan, and I will catch you guys next week on the other side of the blockchain. Good morning, tokenizers. I hope you all survived the Crypto.com Miami Grand Prix. We are filming this show prior to the race, so I'm hoping Red Bull has brought home a trophy by the time this is out. After you catch up on today's security token show, set your alarms for tomorrow at 9 a.m., we have an all new spill in the NFT coming out and we have a brand new boat. We are sad to have seen the other one burn down, but this one is making history in the NFT industry. So it's only appropriate. You'll have to tune into the show to find out how though. All right, first up tokenizers, we have a French basketball team issuing a security token via Avalanche and Securitize. Counterpoint Sports Group, CSG, the new owner of French basketball club, Elan Bernius is pursuing a security token offering, allowing members of the public to purchase economic rights in a deal described as the first of its kind. The Avalanche blockchain will power the offering while Securitize hosts it. The team tokens or PBT tokens will be security tokens categorized as financial securities and the token holders will benefit from the advantages similar to those of being a shareholder through legal structure providing investors a portion of the club's profits. 
launched on April 26, 2022, French investors are able to purchase 500 lots of 500 tokens that will be available for 450 euros or 0.9 euros per token. This investment represents approximately the amount in annual subscription to attend all of the club's matches. The purchase price per token will increase as the sale proceeds. Buyers of the tokens will not be able to sell the tokens for a minimum of one year after the closing of the sale. The holders will also receive exclusive access to a real estate project called Climate Technology Park. This will be a sustainable building complex, but there will be more information to come on that. The money raised is expected to be fully reinvested in the club for operations including staff and player salaries, improvements to equipment and facilities, and a potential investment in the property project. Part of the sum will be set aside for later uses, and a portion will be used to cover the cost of the token sale itself. You can find all of these details and more over at Crowdfund Insider now. Next up, we have Oddity. Oddity security token offering is happening on Securitize through the Ethereum network. I'm super excited about the Oddity token. This project is huge and it's bringing innovative beauty projects to the security token industry. Oddity is the parent company of popular beauty and wellness brands, Il Maquillage and Spoiled Child. Oddity is a consumer tech company which builds and scales digital first brands to disrupt the offline dominated beauty and wellness industries. In the first of its kind company with a unicorn valuation, they're doing an STO. It might just be the first STO from a unicorn that we've seen. This past January, Oddity raised 130 million and now has a valuation of 1.5 billion. It is speculated that the company may go public soon. This token is a digital security that automatically converts into Oddity Class A shares at the time of an IPO. This offering can have large cascading benefits across the capital markets the Oddity token is offered via a Regulation D offering. Uh, the Oddity token offering is now open until May 11th of 2022. For full terms and restrictions, head over to oddity.com. That is all I have this week, but I will see you right back here next Monday. Now let's send it over to sjs.eth for a thrilling market update. Happy Monday! The security token market cap closed just under $18.4 billion, up a hair from last week. This likely won't come as a surprise to many, but a company that has not helped pump the market cap up is INX. In fact, trading at 80 cents, it is below the 90 cent opening price on July 27, 2021, the first day of trading. You may remember the tokenomics where INX has a 40% profit share with investors. Sounds great, right? You might be saying to yourself, the token is down, but at least I get my dividend, right? Well, the owner of the digital asset trading platforms, a broker dealer and an inner dealer broker announced a net loss of $16.3 million. So unfortunately for investors, they won't be seeing any dividend anytime soon. And this really begs the question, should companies that are in growth stages that clearly aren't showing a profit be telling investors they're gonna do a profit share? It almost seems like they should go to more towards the revenue sharing model if they truly are trying to help out the investor or at least make it convertible over time. Because frankly, I feel as if it's doing a serious disservice to investors who are saying they get a piece of the INX action when they have no profit anywhere in sight. We'll see what happens in the future, but for companies like this, it is a little bit disingenuous and it starts, it's time that they either start to develop more for the, their fiduciary responsibilities to their investor or they give a revenue sharing model to help the investors actually get a return on their investment. That's all for now, but I hope you have an amazing rest of your week and I will see you next Monday. Wakey wakey, welcome to Inside the Metaverse with your host, Eve Van Gogh. Getting thirsty from a crazy workout inside the metaverse? Well, you are in luck because Gatorade got you. Jumping in the metaverse with a new trademark filing for virtual beverage products, digital media like artwork, text, audio, video, or non-fungible tokens. Following that, Board 8 Yacht Club's other side land sale sold out within minutes, selling $320 million in virtual real estate in ApeCoin's upcoming metaverse. But all that traffic bumped up the gas fees, some paying as much as $5,000 just to make a purchase. Next up, Spotify has launched its new island in Roblox metaverse, a sound paradise that aims to offer new interactive 
and virtual experiences for fans and artists. Next, Dubai's regulator to launch Metaverse headquarters in the sandbox. However, the location of the headquarters within the sandbox has not yet been revealed, and they have been hush-hush on a lot of the details about what the role of the Meta HQ will be. But according to their statements, it looks like their goal is to openly share knowledge and experiences with consumers and peer regulators to increase awareness, enable safe adoption, and drive global interoperability. That was Inside the Metaverse with your host, Eve Van Cole. And moving on to maybe my favorite part of the episode, we're talking about companies of the week. Oh yeah. This is the two companies that Herwig and I picked that really caught our eye and we wanted to specifically highlight for doing something really, really cool in the space. And Herwig, I'm just gonna kick it off. I was excited about reading about the Elan Bernays Power Tez, which is the basketball team in France. It took me a second to actually find them in the leaderboards because they go by P-A-U-O-R-T-H-E-Z, Pau or Tez is I think, or Po or Tez is how supposedly you're, you're pronouncing that. That, but they're seventh in the French league right now, so they're they're doing pretty good. And they're launching a profit share token. We talked about this in the top five and in Megan's section, but I love sports. I'm super excited about the idea of creating more opportunities to build fan engagement within these different companies because they really have become companies. And in a lot of these sports, financing is really the name of the game. If you have the best you know, stadium, if you have the best training facilities, you're likely going to be able to attract better talent and all these great things as well. So the fact that they're unlocking a new use case to be able to raise capital for, we've seen other companies and other sports teams and different leagues explore it. We haven't quite seen it fully done effectively, so I'm excited to see if, if this new injection of life from Elan Barnes can, can have, kind of help jumpstart the, the sports financing industry, which is a fascinating use case. So for that, I'm going to give it to their team for, for doing some innovative stuff. Absolutely love that choice, Kyle. I mean, sports are a business. And we've been talking for a while now about the tokenization of sports. In fact, we saw some props with Spencer Dinwiddie tokenizing right. his contract. We saw the, the Socios token with sort of fan engagement. But we've been talking about the tokenization of clubs and teams, and it just hasn't happened yet up until now. Great choice. Wishing them a lot of success. How about you? Well, I have to give mine out, of course, to the hometown uh, hero here for the show today out of Antwerp. We're talking about the, the Royal Museum of Fine Arts. Uh, out of Antwerp, and of course, they tokenized a piece of art not through an NFT, but specifically via security token. They had heavy hitting counsel, Hogan Lovells, to make sure that this is done the right way. This is being done in Europe, uh, which makes it slightly more intricate. Uh, and they actually worked with 2140 Consulting, which is uh, some friends out over in Europe who do some similar tokenization work. So I know that this is a great project. And they actually teamed up with a company called Ruby, R U B E Y. Uh, to actually let you, you know, invest in the art and invest in art tokens. So hopefully we're going to start seeing a marketplace there. Hopefully we can start tracking this. I love this just because it is a perfect use case of art for a security token. We finally are seeing art tokenization being done the right way. And, and James Enzer is a great Belgian artist, expressionism and surrealism. Definitely worth a cool, cool piece of art to invest. Shout out to them. And with that, I think we can move into our main topic this week. Let's dig in. If you've ever bought an exchange token, a cryptocurrency exchange token, I'm talking about the likes of Binance token, you've got the Kronos token from crypto.com, or the FTX token, of course, from FTX. Those are all exchange tokens that enable you a certain host of benefits. And recently, the Motley Fool, a well-respected publication, has come out and said, well, these things kind of look and trade a little bit like stocks, so we're going to break that down, Kyle. Yeah, there's a couple of key pieces here that really start to make it look interesting, and I'm going to start with the first point that I have, and that's that most of these offerings were done what they call an initial exchange offering, an IEO. And as we've covered here on the show since, I think, episode seven, maybe eight, this is a little bit sketchy in terms of just traditional crypto selling something for from your platform that's building into the platform, adding features, adding development, if you're raising capital for the future build of the project that you're building, it starts to feel like you're selling a security. So even just the method at which they sell them to the public and how they're doing that for a lot of these different assets already starts it off in, a, in an interesting tone. Yeah, and you mentioned that interesting tone. I think to set the, the setting here, if you will, we often, if you're new to the show, cover these new types of tokens and these different types of tokenizations that happen out there and see if they might fit the bill when it comes to falling under the securities law regulation. 
Uh, and the SEC specifically as the enforcement agency to do this has to uh, put the burden of proof on you to make sure that you actually pass what they call the Howey test. And the Howey test identifies it basically under the fact that if there's a shared enterprise, uh, a common enterprise looking to create profit for its initial shareholders, uh, then you will probably have what's potentially a security on your hands. And therefore, you got to follow a lot of securities laws uh, that make things very interesting here because exchange tokens, they are not security tokens. They are not stocks. They are a whole different beast. And what potentially the Motley Fool is saying is that maybe they actually are. Right. And that's ex- a super important context because it all comes down to how you sell these things, right? Whether it's a security or not, if you're selling a security, you need to make sure that you're understanding who's investing in this deal. You need to make sure that if somebody's investing, they were given the proper disclosures on what they're buying, what the risks are, what the benefits are, all these successful, fantastic things about your offering that you're going to be launching, but potentially some of the risks as well, right? So you need to be making sure that you're following the those regulation guidelines and potentially, and certainly we know that in a lot of these different sales, they were not following those rules. There is no PPM or subscription documents that have been created. You're not signing these things and you're not identifying exactly who these specific people are. So if they're not going to be doing that, you need to make sure that it doesn't look like you're selling an investment in the company. And that's where a lot of these different things start to feel like you're selling those kinds of investment style of benefits that you aren't able to do unless you follow these specific rules. It always comes down to blurring that line and seeing what happens, right? And in this case, there's a couple of potential arguments here, at least how the Miley Fool lines it out, as to why they could be security tokens. And first of all, today, you can't go and invest in Binance. You can't go and invest in FTX. You can't go and invest in crypto.com unless you're a major institutional venture capitalist investor, which most of us are not. Uh, And therefore, the best way that one might think they can get exposure is through their, of course, exchange token. And the exchange token itself comes with benefits, incentivize you to trade through it and to use it. Uh, And they can even, in many cases, stake your token so that you actually get a return of some kind, whether it's additional in the case of FTX, different tokens, or uh, in the case of Binance where you're, you're holding it and so they end up burning the supply over time, which will grow the value. There are a lot of these different mechanisms that are designed to actually increase the value or create a return for the initial purchaser, which is one of those triggers of the Howey test. 100%. Let's talk about specifically how this might work for an exchange token. Well, they have extreme staking programs where you essentially take the tokens that you've purchased, which by the way, a lot of these were originally marketed, like I remember Binance specifically was sold or marketed as the trading pair for all assets on the platform. So basically, if you owned BNB, you'd be able to convert that into any of the other tokens that they owned and vice versa take any of your other assets and convert it into BNB so that you could easily move those assets between different positions because you may not be able to get a a kind of a a lighter trade trading pair or a a lighter liquidity. You might not be able to actually make the trade you want in the specified assets that you're trying to trade in. So that's a little bit more technical, especially without any visual aid here. But basically what they also tried to do was say, okay, well, we need to drive demand for this asset and we need to lock up some of this supply. So in exchange for you locking up the tokens that you hold of this exchange token in our platform or in our exchange or however they want to set it up for their structure, you're going to be getting paid an interest rate on that. You're going to be getting paid a percentage back based off of either the trading volumes on the platform or some other metric that they track. And this starts to look a little bit like dividends, doesn't it? That, okay, you're getting exposure to how the platform is performing based off of your investment and the size of the position that you have. Again, starts to feel like exactly what you would need to to make sure you, you specify what an investor should expect if you were to do something like that. So it starts to look a whole lot like these tokens could be stocks or they trade a little bit like stocks, but there are some arguments as to why they may have escaped Uh, this definition. And in fact, there's a lot of reasons why this is to be avoided because of course it could tank the price of these tokens as all of the compliance and requirements that need to unravel as a result of it being the finest security will have major implications and likely a downward swing on the price, Uh, maybe even kill the tokens altogether. 
Uh, and not to mention that these platforms, these exchanges themselves, hold a lot of the initial tokens that they created. Uh, so there's a lot of value in what they did. And so to, to kind of go towards what they would call decentralization, escape that role of being the, the centralized party that's responsible for creating a return uh, for the initial buyers, They've done things like open up new chains where people can use these tokens and actually build on top of that. We saw Binance chain. Mm -hmm. So now it's beyond just a trading pair example that you mentioned, but actually you can use this within their new blockchain. Uh, and it's similar. We've seen the, the Kronos Foundation in a similar approach. And FTX has yet to reveal one, but it's a, you know they've backed a lot of different projects and it's right. certainly not... Uh, out of the realm of possibility that the FTX token could end up having other features. Uh, but that's one of the plays that they're trying to say, okay, you know what? We're not uh, stocks, Kyle. We're For actually sure. saying, you know what? We're decentralized. Yeah, these exchanges would say, look, if you're buying into our token, you're not getting equity. You don't have voting rights. They're not sold as securities for a reason. It's not that we, you know, they weren't selling them because they were trying to avoid securities laws. They were not including securities laws because they weren't relevant to the specific offering that was being sold, right? In the same way that they would argue that Ethereum wouldn't look like a security or doesn't act like a security. And therefore, they could do their 15 million ICO sale that happened in 2016, 2017 times. It's up for debate. As we've seen with Ripple, they, they tried to argue that and they've continued to try and, and have been successful so far in, in fending off the SEC in that current, what we call the case of the year coined by Herwig. And that's now rolling on two years and maybe more. But we know, according to the top five, the SEC is beefing up their enforcement. And so you may see more ammunition coming to the party to potentially you know start to strike some of these things down. And I think that's the takeaway and maybe the conclusion of the segment here, Kyle which is no token is safe at this point. It seems like we made an argument for just about everything. And this time it wasn't even us. It was the Motley Fool saying, hey, look at this. This is kind of interesting. Looks like these uh, specific exchange tokens trade a little bit like stocks. Agree, disagree, let us know. We'd love your questions. We'd love your feedback. We're always available on social media, Twitter, LinkedIn, everywhere. Uh, and of course, join the security token market community on Discord uh, and all our socials. We're doing a ton of giveaways right now. Tickets, prizes, swag, it's all there. Uh, and of course, stm.co, you can get all the latest trading information, all the latest security token market news, and a whole lot more. Please like and subscribe. We'd love the help. It, it helps with everything, increasing our exposure and getting the word out of how we can drive the gospel of the security token industry. We're here with Security Token Market. Thanks again for watching. Catch you next Monday and happy tokenizing.